Aloha guys, Uncle Brian here. Lately, I've had some questions about ciguatera toxin. Today, I wanted to share my experience with you after having ciguatera twice. Now, a lot of guys don't know much about ciguatera and they want more facts. People are afraid to eat certain types of fish. Everybody in Hawaii is definitely afraid to eat the roy. Personally, I've been eating roy for 10 years, and the first time I got ciguatera was in August of 2014, after my friend Scott dove Anini, which is an area on Kauai on the northeast side that has the Kalihivai River spilling out to the area. Summer months, lots of algae growth. That's how ciguatera is accumulated in the fish, in the dinoflagellates, in the reef algae, in coral low-lying areas. He brought me fillets of knife jaw and roy while I was at work at the emergency department at Mahilona and I appreciated those fish because I didn't have to go shoot them but then that night after I ate them shortly thereafter I got sick stomach cramps diarrhea headache muscle aches within the next couple of hours I started to get the uh, alterations in heat and cold sensation so things that were hot like hot water running on your skin felt cold things like ice that you touch felt hot and I decided that I needed to do something about it so if you look below I've attached some links having to do with a description of ciguatera some other interesting articles that I had researched showing effects in Hawaii. There's even one in there with a pretty cool graph about which fish had the most cases during a certain time period. Another article in there about how on Maui they found that ciguatera toxin in Roy wasn't actually that bad. It was actually worse in the Ulua species. So you guys can check those out on your own time. But today I wanted to tell you what I did to eliminate the toxin from my system. So I had gotten ciguatera and I started asking around, since I'm in the medical field, it's kind of a good resource. So if you look at the first article that describes the ciguatera toxin condition, you'll see medically what they'll do is they'll pump your stomach, otherwise induce vomiting. Uh, otherwise there's medications they can give you. They can give you intravenous therapy. Typically the worst symptoms last only about three to four days, but then the neurological symptoms can stay with you for a long time. I've heard stories of people that had to have been hospitalized for months, maybe even years. So it can be pretty severe. So I kind of did my research and I figured out, okay, if this is a toxin that's in your system, more than likely it's getting stored in your fat tissue and that's why it sticks around and is so hard to eliminate. So I had to figure out a way to get that toxin out of my body. So someone told me about the master cleanse. And I'll put a picture on here, I'll describe that for you. This is the master cleanse book I was telling you about. I downloaded it digitally from Amazon. Here it tells you the purpose is to essentially clean out your system, when to use it. In my case, this is when I wanted to eliminate the ciguatera toxin from my system. This is how to make it. You're gonna juice half a lemon into some warm water. You then add it in some molasses or maple syrup. I found the maple syrup to be more palatable. And then you're gonna put a couple dashes of cayenne pepper. That's gonna spice it up and also helps eliminate more of the toxins. This tells you about the benefits of the lemon. I found it to be pretty hardcore to do, uh, but when you do this, 
it will make you feel a lot better in the end. This page shows you how often, so you drink six to 12 glasses per day. If you're trying to lose weight, you drink less. If you're hungry, you drink more. This is a saltwater flush. This is hardcore, guys. You drink an entire quart of salt water first thing in the morning, it's gonna make you poop like crazy. You're gonna see stuff come out of you that you didn't even know could exist in the human body. But at the end of it, after you feel terrible for a week or 10 days, you'll actually feel really good and you may even be motivated to try it again someday. Personally, I've done this two or three times and every time I feel great afterwards. So after doing the master cleanse for uh, three days going in, three days of just drinking the lemonade and three days coming out, I felt a lot better. But interestingly enough, about a week or two after that, I went on a very rigorous dive with a few friends of mine. And as I was walking back to the car, I told my friend, hey man, you're gonna have to carry my stuff for me. I just, I can't make a fist. I, I want to, but I can't. And that was related to still having that toxin in my system. So that first episode was back in August of 2014. I got sick with Tara the second time in August of 2017 from a kumu of all fish. And guess where that fish was from? Anini. The only reason I took that fish is because I thought, oh, Ziguatera can't be in Kumu. I was wrong. And unfortunately for me, I got sick that night. It wasn't as bad as the first time around. And I don't know if it has to do with it being a smaller fish than the Roy and the knife jaw that I had gotten it from previously. It was the same time of year from the same reef. So now I no longer eat fish from Anini. You couldn't pay me to eat fish from Anini. So the second time around, I did the master cleanse for five days. And then I got to the point where I was trying to work and cleanse and I was just so weak and I remember I was, I was there and the doctor said, you know, you don't look so good. And then I had my wife bring me some juice from like Jamba Juice and I drank that and after I drank that, I was like, I got my color back and stuff. So your body kind of tells you what it can and can't tolerate. But I had very good results going on the master cleanse. So if you guys get Ciguatera and you wanna know how to quickly get that out of your system, that may be an option for you. And it helps to detoxify your body every now and then anyway. So that's my story on having Ciguatera twice. It was not fun at all, but it's not just from Roy. So you guys out there that are afraid of, to eat Roy, maybe if you go to an area that a river doesn't let out to, definitely don't eat the fish in that area where you see a lot of algae blooming on the reef during the summer months. I would also recommend avoiding eating the head, belly, and reproductive organs of those fish. But look at that one study. Ulua was the number one culprit. So I know a lot of guys like Ulua, but don't eat Roy. So maybe you guys got it backwards, who knows? But they don't really make test kits when they did. They were kind of 50-50, they weren't that accurate. So I've heard feed it to the cat if the cat dies, don't eat it. Maybe the neighbor's cat. But those are my experiences with Ciguatera. There's a lot of information out there. If you guys wanna know more, check out the links below. Otherwise, hopefully, you guys don't have to experience what I did. Take care, guys, a lot.